A few years ago, a new form of art, of expression, of social interaction appeared on the internet called ASMR. But I want to start quite some time before that. You ever look at old movies or old pictures and see congregations of people assembling together in ways that are completely unrecognizable today? Maybe it's a party scene with people singing around a piano. Maybe it's a picture of a huge family gathering for a holiday feast. Maybe it's a picnic, such as in the movie Picnic. Check out the picnic in that flick and you'll know what I'm talking about. For that matter, think back on your own life. Think about those childhood times when you would whisper a secret to a friend or just talk about nothing for hours. You really don't have to go much further than that. Simply put, we live in a time far removed from those halcyon days when people used to get together, assemble, be a society. We live in a time when working hours are divided into long, longer, and longest. Some of us work multiple jobs. Some of us work out of our homes. Some of us have kids whose schedules need tending. Some of us have goals and aspirations that take time and effort and focus and, well, the simple fact is, we live in a time when our associations with other human beings are just limited. Sure, we see each other at work or at school, but only when we're busy doing something else, usually at breakneck speed. We are so far removed from others that we sometimes feel isolated. Our longing for some kind of connection with other people is tangible, but we have no idea how to get it back. Enter ASMR. ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Call it tingles, call it braingasms, call it what you will. Wikipedia calls it a distinct pleasurable tingling sensation in the head, scalp, back, or peripheral regions of the body in response to visual, auditory, olfactory, and or cognitive stimuli. What the hell is it? Some people have their theories about how the inner ear reacts to sound. Others talk about the body's response to pleasurable stimuli, etc., etc., etc. I honestly don't think it's any of those specific things, but rather a combination of things. And one of those things is something nobody's talking about. And that is the way our dissociated society is reacting to the very kind of loneliness I talked about before. Quite simply, we found a way to connect with others, a way that makes us feel content and at peace, which only makes sense, after all, when one of our primary needs are being met. And that way is ASMR. Just look at the videos out there, and there are more every day. Most of them involve someone sitting with you, usually talking about some mundane task. The task, of course, is unimportant for the most part. The key here is you coming face to face with another person and enjoying the sensation. Even one as distant and futuristic as this odd one-on-one -on -one view of being the focus of attention, of sharing a moment with another human being. And the people who create these videos are people just like yourself. Men and women who want nothing more than to connect with another person, to communicate, to share a moment. Heather Feather is one of my favorite ASM artists. She's just this pleasant person that's nice to spend some time with. Allie of ASMR Requests is the virtuoso with her departure series of sci-fi tales. If you want some mystery and magic, you can view one of Ardra Neely's amazing videos. And then there's also Whisper's Unicorn, Olivia Kisper, Gentle Whispering, The One Lilium, Softly Galoshes, too many to name, too many to keep up with. Their names can sometimes be strange and even off-putting in a society where gentle whispers and slow movements are a throwback to another time. We simply don't have time for that. But they have shown that whether we have the time or not, we have the desire for this deep, personal connection. Thousands view these videos every day. I'm not saying this is a sign we should heed and scurry back to the 19th century just as fast as we can. Clearly, that's not something that will ever happen. What I'm saying is that when a society becomes dissociated, and even a bit isolated, it's nice to see that there are still people who are willing to look after us, 
to fill a need no one would ever own up to. To spend a little time and a little effort to make us just a little happier. Oh yes, there are plenty who don't understand it. It's a misunderstanding that has led to mislabeling. It's just so difficult to admit how much we need each other. But it's nice to know someone's there just the same.